Hello, my name is Nick and I've built a guitar. This is my entry into Crimson Guitar's Great Guitar Build-Off 2020 unofficial competition. So what is it? Well, it's a Sapili neck through guitar with uh, back mounted pickups, Floyd Rose bridge, black hardware, a bird's eye maple fretboard, and the guitar is finished in tongue oil. Um, so far it's only had two coats, but I intend to remove the hardware and apply lots more coats. It's the first guitar I've ever built and it's been a long time in the making. I've been wanting to build a guitar for probably four or five years. Heavily inspired by Crimson Guitars, Ben Crow and his channel. I'm really happy with the way the guitar's turned out. I think it's extremely playable and I'll use it as one of my main guitars going forward. Unfortunately I don't have any footage of me making the guitar. I never intended to upload this to YouTube but I do have a lot of photos. I'm going to now take you through the build process. And to start with, I decided on the shape for the guitar. So I basically took the shape of a Strat and stretched it slightly in various directions. So it's subtly different to a Strat. And I also changed the shape of the horns to be my own design. I then went out and got some wood. So I found a piece of Sapili in a local wood yard. It's about 2.2 meters long by nine centimeters wide and had in mind a neck through design for this build. I've routed the truss rod um, channel and I've also band sawed off the back of the neck to remove a lot of material, probably leaving about 25 mils worth of material for the neck. And I've shaped the headstock and I've also shaped the sort of side profile for the headstock there with the band saw. I then took my remaining Sapili and decided where I wanted it to be to glue on the sides of the wings of the guitar. I used a number seven plane to plane the sides of these pieces as flat as I could before gluing them up as you can see here on the sides. I then glued on some smaller blocks onto the sides there to complete the shape. And then it was time for the fun part, to cut out the guitar on the bandsaw. Here I've drilled through the truss rod access. Um, I used a long six millimeter drill bit that I got from Tool Station for this. Um, worked pretty well. I, um, to avoid that little bit of wood breaking, I clamped a, a little bit of wood to it as I drilled it, just so that it doesn't snap. Then came the time to glue on the fretboard. Before I glued the fretboard on, I ensured that the two surfaces were as flat as I could get them. And after removing the, the material at the back of the neck with the bandsaw, um, and over a course of about six weeks, the neck had twisted a little bit, so um, planing it flat was necessary. Also you can see that I've covered the truss rod with masking tape and just trimmed any excess off just so that it stops glue going onto the truss rod. I don't think this is completely necessary but I decided to do it anyway. Here's the fretboard I chose. Uh, the one on the right is the one I've used for this guitar. It's a bird's eye maple fretboard. I love the grain on it. I bandsawed the fretboard to size and I also performed a bit of sanding around the edges that I thought would be difficult to sand later. And then I glued it on to the body with as many clamps as I could possibly put on. And there's the fretboard glued on. Looks pretty good. Um, the fretboard came pretty thick, about 9 or 10 mil, and I glued it on in that state. I probably would have planed it flatter or put it through a planer thickness to get it to about 6 or 7 mil before I did this in future. I eventually used a belt sander with some pretty uh, low grip paper on it to um, remove quite a lot of that fretboard material, take it down to about 6 mil. Here you can see I've drilled through the body where the uh, controls are going to be, um, which helped me locate the control cavity on the back. As you can see, I've also done some of the comfort curves at this point. I did this with a combination of um, sawing some slots and chiseling off the, the wood. I also used a Japanese Shinto saw rasp to uh, rasp away some of the flatter bits. And then some of the concave sections, I had to use like a round rasp to uh, remove some of the material. At this stage, the finish is still pretty rough, um, but eventually it would be sanded back with various grits of paper. So the technique I used to carve the neck um, I got from one of Crimson's videos. 
Um, basically you have a centre line and then you have other lines in the same proportions as you go down the neck and you remove material up to those lines and I used a small plane to do this, you could use the, the Shinto rasp or a spoke shave. And the next stage would be to remove those, those corners to hone in on the curved neck shape. It was then time to route the pickup cavities. I spent a lot of time trying to make templates such as this one and I decided that it wasn't really good enough. This was the result from that routing into a bit of MDF and whilst it was okay it wasn't really looking that professional and I didn't want to spoil my my guitar so far by having a bit of a shoddy pickup route. An alternative method was required. Now, this was a template my father-in-law Bill kindly made me using a laser cutter and as you can see it's a lot more accurate. And here you've got the little ears on the pickups to allow the, the pickup mounting um, pieces to go into the guitar. But what we actually went for was a back mounted pickup so that you didn't have to see those ears um, from the front of the guitar. And on that template you can see, well basically the pickup pokes through from the back. In this photo then we are pillar drilling right through the guitar so that the pickups can be mounted from the back. Um, a little bit unconventional but we went for it. So once we pillar drilled away all the material, um, a lot of routing commenced. Now, I don't know why I decided to um, go for a Floyd Rose bridge on my first guitar, but I did. And um, there's a really nice article with a chap who's measured out some templates, um, put the schematics on the internet, which is at the bottom of this video. Here we've used a pillar drill to drill the um, trem posts into the guitar. Unfortunately, when I actually offered up the Floyd Rose, the, it, it wasn't exactly straight. So I pulled one of them out and made a bit of dowel out of Sapili. There you can see I've got my um, dowel block that I've made out of some washers. I've attached the dowel into a drill chuck there and just driving it through, decreasing sizes of washer until you eventually get the size you want. I took my piece of dowel and I glued it back in and re-drilled it. Um, here I'm doing more routing. Um, there was just so much routing really with this guitar. And once I've mount, uh, routed all the back stuff, um, this is a demonstration of how the pickups eventually went in. And they, they float on a bolt and then the bolt was screwed into the wood. So once you've decided on your height, you then screw the bolt into the wood and it suspends it at the right height. Here you can see I've started on the fretting job. Now this was probably the most nerve-wracking part of the build for me. I was probably shaking a bit when I first soared into that fretboard. We made a laser cut template to the scale length that we wanted um, with the fret positions um, and then I just used that to really uh, mark out the fret positions with a scalpel and then the, the saw could um, nicely run in that little, little groove created by the scalpel. The fretting really wasn't easy for me. Um, I found it really hard to keep my saw completely vertical um, and in future I'd probably consider using like a fret sawing jig or something similar to that or possibly just more practice. Here I'm in the kitchen banging in the frets. I've got a fret hammer there that I got from Tone Tech, it's a Summit Hammer. I also got some Crimson Guitars um, end cutters there which are very good. And I made a little um, neck rest there from a scrap bit of Sapili and just put a bit of felt on it just to take the weight under each fret. I wanted quite a simple um, fret marker sort of system. Um, I didn't really want to put anything on the maple fretboard because I thought it looked really nice as it was. So I just opted for some side dots and you can see I've made some dowels out of the Sapili, um, probably about two millimeter dowels and I've just super glued them in. It was really difficult to drill them in the right place and what I did was I used a center punch to make a small indentation in exactly the right place I wanted it and I used a bradle to open that hole up a bit and I used a 2mm drill bit to, um, to, to drill the side marker hole. Here you can see I've um, added a little Sapili shim on the nut there to, to raise it up to give enough clearance to get the, the nut at the right height. Once I'd installed my frets I um, filed off the sides of them with a Crimson Guitars fret levelling file. So it's basically just a, a big file with a, a handle on it that you run down the sides. I then masked off the fretboard and started my fret levelling job. I applied permanent marker to each of the frets so I could see exactly what was being removed and where. 
I then used the fret leveling file to initially take off quite a lot of material. When I was happy I used the Crimson Guitars fret leveling beam with some 600 grit paper to sand the frets to a, a, a smoother finish. I then used a Crimson Guitars um, triangular fret crowning file to, to crown the frets until there was a, a thin strip of about a millimetre worth of permanent marker left in the middle of the fret. I then used a fret end dressing file to um, take some of the sharp bits off at the ends of the frets. And then I polished the frets and the end with some 600 grit paper and then some 1200 grit paper. And I used some fret um, rubbers to polish the frets up through various grades until they were shiny. Here I'm installing my um, five position blade switch and I've drilled a number of tiny holes with a pillar drill. There's a completed slot. I used a bit of sandpaper to, um, to smooth it out. I never used that um, Fender Ultra switch in the end, it was just too complicated for my brain to understand. Um, there you can see I've made some custom back plates um, out of the, the Sapili. I basically ripped a bit of Sapili, about 5mm, and then I, I glued it up and um, cut it to the shape I needed. I then bought some tiny magnets off eBay, probably about 3mm by 1 or 2, and used those to secure the back plates. Here I've used some Crimson Guitars rear guard shielding paint. Um, the paint went on really well, dried pretty quickly. I applied two coats and I tested it with a multimeter to ensure continuity. I think the paint worked really well. Unfortunately, I painted on the rim where the uh, wooden back plate sits, and due to that, they didn't fit anymore. So I had to then chisel off a lot of that paint, which was very messy, and um, I severely regret that. There was then a lot of work required to get the guitar ready for finish. Um, I really didn't want to rush this process because then I might have had scratches on it and stuff that would just show through the finish. I sanded it right through the grits from 60 up to 1200 grit. There was a lot of toing and froing going back to earlier grits where I found there were scratches that I just couldn't get out with high grits and it took a lot of time. And then eventually I was ready to apply my chosen finish, which is tongue oil. I thinned out the first coat with 70% white spirit and 30% tongue oil, and then the second coat was 50-50. I followed instructions on an article I found on the internet about tongue oil, which I'll post at the bottom of this video. Um, I'll eventually get down to applying neat tongue oil, and I'll probably apply a few coats of that. I'm really happy with the way the fretboards turned out and the, the guitar wood. It was then time to install the pickups and electronics. Um, and thanks to my father-in-law, Bill, who did the soldering. I'd been recommended um, iron gear pickups uh, made in the UK. Um, I've got a rolling mill in the neck and a rolling mill overwound in the bridge. It's basically like a path pickup for modern rock. And it sounds great. It's got a Texas low coat in the middle position, which is basically an overwound Texas special single coil type thing. And it really transforms this guitar from being a kind of rock thing into a, a Texas blues machine. I'm really happy with the contrasting pickup sounds it can produce. Okay, that's all from me. If you've listened this far, thank you very much. Do tune into the channel again, as I've got some future builds coming up that I'd like to share. See you again soon.